This video was produced by the State Historical Records Advisory Board with support from the National Historical Publications and Records Commission. For more information on the board and its activities, please visit the link in the description of this video. This brief video will introduce you to some of the technical concepts behind digitization, like pixels per inch or PPI and color model. It's a follow-up to the first Basics of Digitization video. As a reminder, the word digitization means the conversion of text, pictures, or sound into a digital form that can be processed by a computer. In the case of print or photos, this usually means using a scanner to create a digital image that represents the original. For audiovisual items, this usually means using special equipment that will play the tape, disc, or film in a way that the sound and moving images can be converted to a computer file. This video will talk primarily about scanning items on paper. When scanning printed items, you have options regarding the files you create. Some of the most common characteristics to adjust are resolution, color space, and file type. Let's start by talking about resolution. The word resolution refers to the amount of digital information contained within an image. Higher resolution means more information. Lower resolution means less information. For images, resolution is expressed by pixels per inch. A pixel is a unit of visual digital information. So when you have fewer pixels stored in an inch, you have less detail or less information. When you have more pixels stored in an inch, you have more detail or more information. You can think of pixels per inch like words and sentences. If you have a sentence like, please stop the bus, you don't get a whole lot of information. If you have more words in that sentence, like please stop the bus as soon as possible because I dropped my wallet out the window, you know a whole lot more information. In the same way, if your resolution is two pixels per inch, you have a lot less information than if you have four pixels per inch or eight pixels per inch or higher. When you're scanning, the software that you use with your scanner will have a place where you can choose a resolution. It might be a list of options you choose from or it might be a value you have to type in. Here's a screenshot from software showing where you can input resolution. It's best to try to create an initial scan with high resolution, a lot of information. You can always take information out of a file by saving it at a smaller size, but you can't put information back into a file if that information is gone. Here are some suggested resolutions for scanning different types of common print items. Another characteristic you can change when you're scanning print items is color. If the original item you're scanning is a color photograph, you want to make sure you select 24-bit color. If you're working with a black and white photograph or a black and white printed document, you may want to choose grayscale instead. Files scanned in color will be a larger file size and take up more space on your hard drive. Speaking of file size, let's talk about different file formats and how they affect your images and the amount of storage space you'll need. When scanning, you'll have the option to save your images to a number of different formats. Some common ones are TIFF, JPEG, and PNG. You may also be familiar with formats like PDF and JPEG 2000. File formats vary because they do different things with the information they contain. When it comes to images, the important thing to note about file formats is compression. A compressed or lossy file format is one that removes some of the original visual information from the file upon saving. One of the primary reasons lossy formats exist is to make files that don't take up as much storage space. If you remember from earlier when we talked about resolution, the more information you have in your image, the more storage that file will require. A JPEG, which is a lossy file format, is one that removes some of the visual information from your image so that you end up with a smaller file size. Remember our example of the two sentences, please stop the bus compared to please stop the bus as soon as possible because I dropped my wallet out the window? A JPEG file format would look at the second sentence and say, oh, we don't need that many words. Let's take out as soon as possible. JPEGs take out visual information that software determines isn't necessary. The result is a pretty good image that's easier to transfer or share online. However, you want to capture as much information as you can in your original scan because, as we've mentioned, you can take information out, but you can't put it back. A TIFF file format by default is lossless or uncompressed. This is the recommended file format for your original scan because it'll keep all the information in your file every time you save it. Once you have a TIFF, you can save it as all kinds of compressed formats like a JPEG, PDF, or PNG for other purposes. The three topics discussed in this video, resolution, color, and file type, 
all work together to determine a digital image's storage size. For example, a 24-bit color 600 ppi TIFF will take more storage than a grayscale 300 ppi JPEG. It's a good idea to do some test scans of a few different items at different resolutions to determine how much storage you'll need for your entire scanning project. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check the other videos in this series.